Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm Martin. This is the Whiteboard and we're learning about all things IT asset management. This week, software audits. What even is a software audit and what are the different types? So a software audit is a check against what you're actually using and consuming versus what you've agreed in the terms conditions or the contract or the license agreement, whatever it is that you use to buy the software. And the audit mechanism is a way of coming to see you to say, are you actually adhering to what we've set out in the terms conditions? It's a bit like a ticket inspector walking down the train and inspecting that you've got the correct ticket. Yes, you might have bought a ticket, but are you on the right fare? Are you using the right sort of ticket, etc.? Or it's a bit like a house inspection if you're renting a house. Uh, they rented your house on certain conditions and they pop around to make sure you're looking after the property. Four types of software audit to talk about today. Soft and hard audits, internal and external. So let's go in reverse order. We we'll start down here, external hard audit. So this is a audit kicked off by the publisher themselves. It's obviously external to your company because it's a software publisher and it's a hard audit because it's actually uh, they're enacting the clause in the contract that says we reserve the right to audit you and they're coming in to audit you. So it's a serious issue. It costs them money so they're not, they're not going to just do it on a whim and obviously there's penalties against uh, breaching this audit so this is to be taken seriously. There's also external audits that we're calling soft audits and these are things like reviews, uh, you might uh, have them called assessments or diagnostics or uh, readiness assessment, cloud readiness assessment. This is a audit on behalf of, it might be the publisher, it might be a partner, it might be a third party but it's not a legal audit, it's a soft audit that you have to actually uh, give consent to and initiate. Um, sometimes these are useful. If you're transforming your business with this publisher and you're going in a certain direction, then that can be useful. Um, it's not so useful if it's a sales driven exercise and you don't really want to do it and it's, threat it's threatened like a legal audit, but it's actually a sales exercise. So this is something to be wary of. We then have our internal audits. So I, this is internal audit. So this is your internal risk team that might periodically do an audit of how you manage the risk in software. And generally speaking, uh, this is usually quite welcome because internal audit will assess your maturity in managing risk and will often uh, recommend uh, to the board uh, or to the risk team um, recommendations about how you can improve ITS management. So this is generally to be welcomed because it gives power to your elbow to get more budget and to build an ITM practice. And the last form is a internal audit but it's soft and this is basically a dress rehearsal. And what we want to do as best practice is periodically we want to do a dress rehearsal of a software audit so that we're ready should this one come knocking. That's recommended to do periodically for high-risk software publishers. 